Good evening to each and every one of you. To those who are tuned in with us on the, tonight, all praises go to our Heavenly Father, Jesus Christ. Uh, to each and every one of you, we pray that you've had a great, great week thus far. Thank God again for another day. <clears throat> that God has allowed us to be here, uh, to be able to uh, get into his word and learn more about him. The Bible tells us that the people perish by the lack of knowledge. God for this opportunity that we may uh, have knowledge about God, that we may um, be able to please Him. Let us bow our ears for a word of prayer. Go to the Lord in prayer. Father, thank you again for this opportunity to stand. We pray now that you take us out of self, out of behind your cross, give strength to your creature, power to your word. And God, we pray that you will give us a refreshing word, a word that, that may enlighten our hearts and our minds sign off and leave this place that we can please you. Give us now for our sins, wipe our sins clean, and give us a brand new start. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. <clears throat> Alright, we're going to continue our uh, series on uh, God's people praying through the pandemic. And we know that James 5 and 16 says, effectual prayer of the righteous avails much. That James 5 and 16 and C. <clears throat> But we're going to be dealing with our subscripture again uh, as we look at James 1, 5, and 7. And uh, we call this, this scripture the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. The prayer of faith. James 5, 1, 7 says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let's give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. Let him ask in faith. If he asks in faith, he's praying the prayer of faith. Let him ask in faith. That's, that's what we're dealing with. We're not wavering, for he that wavereth is like the wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. So this is our, our subscripture that we've been dealing with, and particularly the, the A part of chapter 1, verse, verse 6. <clears throat> and so last week, we talked about the prayer of faith, how it includes the prayer of submission. The prayer of submission is praying in the will of God. Now remember, the prayer of faith does not exclude the will of God. So please remember that the prayer of faith does not exclude the will of God. So when we say, when we say, but let him ask in faith, we are asking him in the will of God. We're asking for God's will to be done. Whatever our prayer is, we're asking God's will to be done. So let him ask in faith means the will of God. This is called the prayer of faith. Now, prayer of faith does not exclude the will of God. And remember, we looked at First uh, John you know, last week, chapter 5, verse 14. We looked at this last week. It said, and this is the confidence that we have in him, in him, God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. That's the prayer of faith. We got confidence in God. And while, and while we have confidence in him, we're asking anything according to his will. And we know that and we, we have confidence and we are assured that he heareth us if we ask it in his will. So it says, and, and, and what this is actually saying to us is that any, side, out, any prayer outside of his will, he does not hear. All right. So it has to be in his will. That's the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith is having confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, remember, <clears throat> that should always be our prayer. No matter what, that should always be our prayer. You know, no matter what circumstance that's before you, no matter what challenges are before us in our life, we ought, we ought to want his will to be done. Because it ain't about us, it's about him. So our prayer should always be there. Look at Matthew 6 and 10. <clears throat> And this is the model prayer. We call it the model prayer. Now, you don't have to 
to recite it. It's just a model. It's some type of pattern to go by. And so in this model prayer, it says, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Right? In earth as it is in heaven. That's our model prayer. That's the word. That's the word of God. God says, this is how we should pray. Thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. So, so we, we must remember that prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven. But prayer is getting God's will done on earth. So it ain't about us twisting his own, trying to get him to change his mind, or trying to get him to do what we want him to do. That's not the prayer of faith. The prayer of faith is saying, God, I want your will done. That's the prayer of faith. And you have to grow and mature into your spirituality to pray this type of prayer. Because his will may not always be your will. Or I'll say, his will may not always be what you want. Nine times out of ten, it probably ain't going to be what we want. <clears throat> it's going to be his will. Because he knows better than us. We only know what we can see. We're limited. God sees way beyond what we can see. That's why it's called the prayer of faith. All right? So, so prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven, but prayer is getting God's will done on earth. The prayer of faith is laying hold to God's willingness. It's laying hold to God's willingness. You have to lay hold to it. It's God's willingness. So when we read some scriptures, <clears throat> we're going to get some scriptures that's called, uh, what they call um, prayer promises, okay? Prayer promises. And, and prayer promises must always be conformed to the prayer of faith, okay? Prayer promises must always be prayed with the prayer of faith. Thy will be done. Okay, so let's look at a few prayer promises. <clears throat> the first one we want to look at is uh, Matt, Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11, verse 12 through 14. The next morning as they were leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. He noticed a fig tree in full, in full leaf a little way off. <clears throat> so he went over to see if he could find any figs. But there were only leaves because it was too early in the season for fruit. Then Jesus said to the tree, may no one ever eat your fruit again. And the disciples heard him say it. Now watch verse 20. Go to verse 20. The next morning, as they passed by, the fig tree had he had cursed. Because remember he said, no one shall ever eat fruit from this tree again. Mm -hmm. So he cursed that tree. The disciples noticed it had withered from the, from the roots up. <clears throat> but Peter remembered what Jesus had said to the tree on the previous day and explained, look, Rabbi, the fig tree you cursed has withered and died. Then Jesus says to the disciples, have faith in God. Remember this right here. Underline this. Remember that. Go to verse 23. I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and it will happen. But you, <clears throat> but you must really believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Now, I want us to focus again on the 23rd verse again. Now, look at this. Look what Jesus says. Jesus, I tell you the truth. You can say to this mountain, may you be lifted up and thrown into the sea. Now, we talked about the mountain a few weeks ago. About a mountain is not literally a mountain. But it's something that's, that's challenging, an obstacle that, that, uh, that's hard to bear. Something that, that may uh, be overwhelming to you. That's what I'm in. A mountain to be anything that you can't handle. 
But Jesus said, you can say to that mountain. And that mountain can be lifted up and thrown into the sea. And it will happen. But you really must believe it will happen and have no doubt in your heart. Now, if you just take this part right here, this verse 23, if you just take that, hold on to it, go to bed at night, and say, I'm going to speak to that mountain. That mountain is going to be lifted, thrown into the sea, because I really believe it. And God said, if I don't have no doubt, then it's going to happen. All right. That's true. But let's go back up again to the previous verse. Because the first thing that Jesus says before he says verse 23 is have faith in God. So he, he purposely told us to have faith in God before he started talking about speaking to the mountain. Now, the point is, why would, why would he do that? Well, remember, the prayer of faith is not faith in the prayer, but it's faith in God. See, we get, we, get the, we get so emotional on speaking, on speaking to the mountain that we, we believe we have faith in the prayer, but we don't pray the prayer of faith. First thing Jesus says is have faith in God. So what he's saying to, to the disciples is that when you have faith in God, you're going to be able to do what the will of God is saying. Mm -hmm. He didn't say have faith in that prayer. See what I'm saying? Believe. Faith in the prayer believes if I pray long enough, and if I pray hard enough, I can have what I want if I ask. That's, that's faith in the prayer. This is why many people are, are walking around hurt and, and depressed and discouraged, uh, particularly when a prayer doesn't go through, but you've been praying for. You, you had faith in the prayer. You put all your faith in verse 23. You speak into the mountain, and the mountain ain't moved. In fact, it's in a desert. Ain't no sea by it to speak to. You, you have faith in the prayer, but you're not praying the prayer of faith. All right. The prayer of faith says, I'm going to have faith in God, and whatever God says, then I speak to that mountain. Then that mountain can be moved. Y'all with me? Don't put your faith in the prayer. Have the prayer of faith. That's what I'm saying. We have to pray the prayer of faith. Have faith in God. So when we read Mark 11, chapter 23 and 24, we only see the mountain speaking. We see uh, it will happen. We see, believe it will happen, and no doubt, we see all that. But we don't see how faith in God. <laughs> and that's the very first thing Jesus said. Jesus said, have faith in God. So what does have faith in God mean? It means, if it's God's will. It means, I can speak to this mountain, cast it into the sea. I can pray and believe and receive it will happen, but if it's not his will, I can do all these things and it's not going to happen. Because prayer is not to get our will done in heaven, but to get God's will, man done, uh, God's will done on earth. Right? Look at Psalm 37, verse 4. Here's another prayer promise. Take the light in the Lord. And he will give you your heart's desires. Now, if you take that part off, that sounds pretty good. I'm going to get my heart desire. Right? But the psalmist says this verse. Take the light in the Lord. What is that saying? Take the light in the Lord is saying, find out what God wants in the matter. Find out what God says about it. Or if God is delighting in it. Does God take pleasure in this? That whatever I'm 
I'm praying, does God take pleasure in this? Another definition of delight is to be pampered. Is God being pampered in what I'm asking? Is God being pleased? Is God taking pleasure? If God is taking pleasure in this, then I get my heart desire. See, we don't mind focusing on this part, but we don't want to focus on that part. Right? Delight thyself also in the Lord. All our desires in our heart will conform to what he wants. And as you grow in God, as you begin to grow and learn how to pray, then you're okay with what he said. You're okay with, this, with saying it's his will. Because you have grown in him. And whatever he decides, you already know that if the answer is no, he has something better for you. You already know that if, if I'm praying his will, then what he, what I wanted must not have been good for me. Because <laughs> all things work together for the good of those that love the Lord and call for the truth. So the idea is for your desires to please him. So look at another prayer promise. John 15 and 7. Another. <clears throat> Watch what he says. But if you remain in me, and my words remain in you, you may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Now, if I take this part off, I'm going to go around asking for whatever I want. <laughs> and I'll say it. God told me I can ask for anything I want. <laughs> But what about the part, what about the condition of what right, you're asking right, for what you want? Right. The condition is, you got to remain in me, and my words remain in you. Because this whole chapter is about the vine and the branch. In other words, if the vine stays connected to the branch, or if the branch stays connected to the vine, you produce fruits. You produce what God wants you to produce. But if that vine and that branch disconnects, then the branch is on its own. So when you're praying this, but if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you're not, you're not asking for what you want. You're asking for what he wants. Because his words are in you. <laughs> yeah, his words. That's why he says continue. Stay in my word. Then you'll know what to ask for. Right? So we got another prayer promise. John 14. Here it is again. Watch this. You can ask for anything in my name, and I'll do it. So that the Son can bring glory to the Father. Yes, ask me for anything in my name, and I'll do it. Wait a minute. Anything? Yes, anything. But here's the condition. It's got to be in my name. So a lot of people, a lot of people would think this scripture means, well, I said in his name, so it's got to happen. <laughs> That's not what that means. This means... That when you say in his name, you're saying if it's his will. It's all like when you have a paper that needs to be signed, they, they have the, the, the name printed at the bottom. But then if, if you want it to be official, it has to have a signature on it or, or, or a stamp approved. Well, when we pray, we're leaving that part blank. And we're saying in the name of Jesus. Because what we really want, we want Jesus to stamp his approval. There might be some times he might not stamp his approval. But that's okay because you said in his name. You're saying, as long as it's in your will, I ask for it. All right? 
So to pray in the name of Jesus means to pray within the will of Christ. When you say in the name, you are saying, if it's your will. You are taking Jesus to stamp his name at the bottom. That's why you say in the name of Jesus. Every time you say, we ask this in the name of Jesus, you're saying, Lord, if it's your will. So you can't get upset and mad if the prayer doesn't go through because you said in the name of Jesus. <laughs> you said, God, if it's your will. But when you don't know, you'll say, well, I said his name, so it's got to come through. Just reading it from the script from the outside, it means that if I can ask for anything I want. If that be the case, it's a lot of things we could have asked for, and all we had to say was his name, and we got it. What you say? <laughs> Just imagine all the prayers you prayed that you said in the name of Jesus. Ooh, if that was the formula, if this was a formula, I probably wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> If this was the formula, if this was if this was the formula to get anything I wanted, mm. I thank God this ain't the formula. Because <laughs> Bob said we don't know what to pray for, no. right? So, so in my name means to ask in your will. So you might not you might not say it uh, verbatim, but. When you say in my in Jesus' name, you're actually saying in the will of God. Alright? But let's keep going. So when we don't have the heart or the attitude or, or the desire to, to pray the prayer of faith, two things can happen in regards to your prayer life. So this is why you need to you need to start praying, God, give me the heart to say in, in your will. Give me the desire to want your will to be. Start practicing that. Have the attitude before you even start praying. So I want I want your will to be done. Because we'll always have something we, we need to pray for. Everybody that's listening or that's, that's present right now got something you need you praying for. Amen. And you want God's will to be done. Now remember. We said two weeks ago, if it's in his word, that's his will. Mm -hmm. So if you're praying, uh, Lord, save my children, that's his will. The Bible said he came to save. The Bible said he's not slack concerning his promise, but he's long-suffering so that no one would perish. That's his will. You can say that with confidence. But we're talking about the unknown things. Things that we don't know. And we say in the name of Jesus. We're saying Lord if you show me. So two things happen. If you don't have this type of attitude. And it will be so obvious in your life. Number one. The first thing that would happen. If you don't have a prayer of faith. You'll have a slowful prayer life. Your prayer life will be slowful. If you, if you, if you think. This is the remedy to getting anything you want. Because many of you can, 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 can agree with me that this is not the, this is not the resolution. Because every time I pray, I say in the name of Jesus. But some things they came through in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so this, so just saying his name is not the formula. The formula is having the attitude and the spirit of saying, God, I want your will. But when you say in the name of Jesus, then you need to have, you need to accept what you are actually saying. And don't just be saying it, just be saying. Because you're saying, God, I want your will done. Because if 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 if, if this, if you're using speaking into the mountain, Casting it into the sea, and you're having more faith in the prayer and not the prayer of faith, then you're going to be disappointed. And, and, and as a result of your disappointment, you're going to have a slowful prayer life. 
when I was slow for pride. Look at Daniel 6 and 10. That's why I like Daniel. When, 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 they, when they got ready to, to uh, put Daniel in the den of lions, Daniel had got word. And look at what it said. When Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with, with his windows open toward Jerusalem. And he prayed three times a day, just as he had always done. So when trouble came Daniel's way, he's already had a habit of praying because he prayed three times a day. And nowhere will we read that Daniel was begging this not to happen. So he probably, most likely, had the prayer life where he says, God, let your will be done. <laughs> he developed the prayer of faith. He wasn't slowful in praying. He prayed three times a day. Just as he has always done. Look what he's saying. Jesus. Giving thanks to his God. He's thanking God, and he's about to be thrown in the lion's den. So he's okay with God's will. Because he knows God's going to take care of him. And when you read the story, God did take care of him. But he wasn't. A slopeful prayer. He prayed. The Bible said, which man should always pray. Pray without ceasing and not faint. So let's look at let's look at slopeful praying. Let's go to uh, James chapter 4, verse 2c. James 4, 2c. Talking about slopeful prayer. If you do not develop an attitude of the prayer of faith, then you will develop a slopeful prayer life. Here it is. It says, yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. King James said, you have not because you ask God. Now, James is talking to a group of people who are slowful in praying. All right? They are not even asking God. They are not even asking God. Blessings can't even come down because their prayers are not even going up. If nothing is ascending, nothing will descend. This is, this is the attitude of a person that has put their faith in the prayer and not the prayer of faith. Because when they put the faith in the mountain moving, it didn't happen. So when that happens, I ain't going to pray no more. It's because you went in with the wrong attitude and the wrong approach of how prayer works. A lot of people don't know how prayer works. They think it's, it's, a, it's a way of getting what you want from God. So they didn't even ask. <laughs> James said, you don't have what you want because you don't even ask for it. Because they wasn't, they wasn't willing to pray the prayer of faith. Alright? So, so what would make, what would make uh, a person have a slow for prayer? There's one thing that would make people have a slow for prayer and that is sin. In fact, when you read James chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, James explains to us, before he even says um, what he says in verse, verse 2, he even, he even explains why they won't even ask God for prayer. Watch what he says. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires that were within you? Look at verse, verse 2. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You want what you don't have. That's the key there. Your desire. 
They pray, they've been praying for something. Mm -hmm. They ain't get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet, you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. Mm -hmm. so, so their problem, obviously, was sin. Mm -hmm. Sin will cause a very slothful prayer life. A sinful life will keep you from praying. People that, people that lives in sin don't pray. Because sin will keep you from praying, but praying will keep you from sinning. Amen. Amen. So, so, so in order to, to have a right type of prayer life, then you always have to correct yourself in regard to sin. Sin makes you feel guilty. Sin makes you feel ashamed. Sin makes you feel undeserving. It'll make you not even want to go to God and ask for something. Because you feel like you don't deserve it. So you won't even ask. If, if, if a fella been bad in school and got bad grades in his school, he not going to go ask him, Mama, can he go outside? <laughs> he, he ain't going to take that chance. He already know it. He don't deserve to go outside. So he's not going to ask. Sin will keep you away from praying. People that don't have a good prayer life got some sin that's stopping them from praying. All right? That's why, that's why sin has to be corrected. Because it, it, it will affect your, your communication with God. Look at uh, Proverbs 28 and 9. God detests the prayer of a person who ignores his word. God detests the prayers of a person who ignores his word. Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Where regard means if I cling to, if I hold on to something. That's why you have to immediately get it out of there. The Bible says when, when sin is developed, it, it conceives life and it brings forth death. You got to get it out because you're not going to pray. And when you pray, he ain't going to hear you. <laughs> It's like a total disconnect. Both of y'all phones muted. <laughs> See it. So sin will hinder you from praying. It will hurt you from getting a prayer through. Sin will affect your relationship with God. It'll affect your communication. Uh, Adam and Eve is a perfect example. Let's look at Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. When the cool of the evening brings were, were, were blowing. When the cool of the evening breeze were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking. God used to walk and talk to Adam. They would communicate. Adam would talk to God. God would talk to Adam. But on this particular evening, Adam couldn't be found. Mm -hmm. God was walking about in the garden, so they hid. And it's right there. From the Lord God among the trees. Why were they hiding? Because <laughs> well, they had just committed a sin. Yeah. They had just committed a sin. This is the first question asked. Where are you? And this was the first answer. I was afraid. Mm. He said, Adam, where are you? He replied, I heard you walking. <laughs> so I hid. He didn't want to have no communication with God. Sin interrupts communication with God. Sin will communicate and communicate. You know, there's a, there a story in the Bible about David. And when David, David had had sinned, the Bible says 
he went to his palace. And, and David stayed in his palace for one year without even talking to God. He had stayed in his palace one year without talking to God. Okay, uh, Psalms 39. Psalm 32. He says, When I refuse to confess my sin, look at this, my body wasted away, and I groan all day long. He said, Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Mm. See, when, when, when you don't when you don't hurry up and get it corrected, the communication becomes worse and worse. You drift further and further away from God. So you ain't going to pray. You're going to have a slow prayer life. Because it compounds guilt. All guilt brings shame. And it, and it compounds the problem. It, and, it's, and, it's, and it eats away at your spiritual communication. That's why it has to be confessed. The Bible said they that, that hide their confessions will not prosper. He said, well, I refuse to. They, David was so disconnected from God. He was chilling in his palace. And then Nathan the priest knocked on his door. Because he wasn't talking to God. So God sent a preacher, a priest, to knock on his door to tell him, you done messed up. Mm. So God had to send somebody who was communicating with God because his line was disconnected. Mm. <laughs> so like, so like when, when, when me and my mother was, was, was in the mall one day and, and my mother phone had died and her friend in, in, in Dallas, my uh, Aunt Betty, uh, my Amy, had tried to call my mother. But my mother's phone had died. So instead of her calling my mother, she called me. Because my communication line was still open. Mm -hmm. And she said, where's your mama? I said, I got her right here. She said, well, I've been trying to call her. She said, baby, my phone is dead. David's phone was dead. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but Nathan had open, open line communication. The only reason why his phone was dead is because he didn't confess. Mm -hmm. And so you have a slow for prayer life. You won't pray. But you feel guilty. You'll be hiding. <laughs> You'll be hiding. And see, a lot of folks hide. Uh, they don't hide behind trees like Adam, but they hide behind being too busy. Mm -hmm. They hide behind their jobs. Or, or they hide behind a ministry. Hide behind a busy schedule. And, and, and consequently, they have slow for prayer life. Alright? So, so prayer is like the rescue chapter, chapter that rescues you from sin. You can confess it. But we must remember, if our, if our perfection is what gets us access to prayer, then all of us will be in trouble. It ain't got nothing to do with your perfection. Got something to do with you confessing. You gotta confess. Hebrews 4. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses. So if Adam would have just known this, he wouldn't have to hide behind the trees. Some people don't know this. That's why when you talk to people, they say, ooh, I don't know. If I go to church, the church might burn down. <laughs> so they think their guilt and their sin is so bad that if they put their foot in church, the whole church is going to fall down. They don't know what kind of God we serve. <laughs> he understands our weakness. Well, he faced all the same testing we do. Yet, he did not sin. 
So let us come what? Boldly. Adam didn't have to run. David did not have to hide. Let's come boldly to the throne of grace. There we will receive two things we're going to need. Mercy and grace. It's not a throne of judgment. It's a throne of grace and a throne of mercy. It's not a throne of condemnation. So we have to know that. We have to know that. Because if we don't understand what kind of God we serve, it's going to make you run from God. And then your prayer life will suffer behind you. You are never, ever too sinful to pray. Please remember that. Confess it. Confess your sin. Look at 1 John 1 and 9. 1 John. If we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, cleanse us from all wickedness. 1 John chapter 3, verse 21 and 22. Watch this scripture. 1 John chapter 3, 21 and 22. All right, here we go. Dear friends, listen to this. If we don't feel guilty, we can come to God with bold confidence. This here is a book. This will make you not even want to come to God. Guilt. And one thing the devil is good at is making you feel guilty. Look at you. You're trying to go to him. You done did all that. That's what he wants. But watch this. And we will receive from him whatever we ask because we obey him and do the things that please him. There it is again. His will. We're pleasing him. But if you're guilty, you won't go to him in comfort. Prayer will lead you out of sin. You won't have a heart or desire to have a prayer of faith when you have slowfulness in your life. Slowful prayer. We're going to stop right there. Now, next Wednesday, we're not going to only deal with a slowful prayer, prayer life. We'll deal with a selfish prayer life. All right? We'll deal with a selfish prayer life. You think I was going to pitch? So let's continue to uh, practice praying and practice how to pray. Pray in His will. Amen? Amen. All right. God bless you. We will uh, be ready to dismiss as we uh, give you our coronavirus report. We have a coronavirus report and good news. All the way from August of 5th up until August the 9th, they were under, under, the cases were under 100. And we don't know if there's lack of testing or not, but we know that August the 5th it was 62, August the 6th it was 62, August the 7th it was 61, August the 8th it was 85, August the 9th it was 24, August the 10th it was 114, and August the 11th it was 91. So, There is a, a slight decrease, which is good news. And we still, it still exists. Let's not be fooled. And so we still need to be careful. 120,716 people were totally tested. 9,605 cases. 5,000 active cases. 100 hospitalized and 75 deaths. This is all Galveston County. Right? That's the coronavirus report. So it's been looking pretty good. So uh, people are wearing their masks and, and practice social distancing. But we got another challenge coming up, and that is the opening of schools. So we'll see how it goes. All right? Uh, in respect to opening schools, we talked about it Sunday that, um, oh, Sunday school. Okay, school. All right, so we, we're asking that you would donate. 
our funds or money or seeds into our M25 ministry uh, because we're going to be passing out uh, school supplies on August the 22nd between 10 a.m. and 12 noon on August the 22nd. So whatever you have, you want to go to our Givelify, you can click the link M25, or if you want to put it in the envelope, there's an M25 uh, list labeled on the uh, envelope as well. Whatever you can do to help us, if you don't have the $5, that's fine. Whatever you can do, we can buy uh, some paper for, for our children, a pen, pencil, whatever you can do, we appreciate it. Uh, we're gonna, we'll announce that again Sunday, and we'll announce it again following Wednesday. And then uh, on that Saturday, we'll be here, the youth leaders will be here to give out uh, those uh, school supplies. All right? Again, we... Uh, we're having Sunday school at 6 o'clock on today, uh, Thursday, August 13th, 6 o'clock. Um, conference call number, access number, mutual phone. All right. I think Brother Martin will be teaching uh, on tomorrow night. And that Sunday school is from 6 to 6.45. Um, we will, he will teach the lesson, and after the lesson has been taught, uh, you can unmute your phones and have any discussions or questions that you may have. This will be every Thursday at 6 o'clock. All right. I think that's all I have. We want to pause uh, to give you an opportunity to give through our Givelify on tonight uh, that you may give uh, for our Bible study night. Thank those who are continuing to give. Continue to pray for those who are sick and our, uh, those who have lost loved ones. Uh, we want to continue to pray, pray for them. Please, let's continue to lift up our elderly. All right? Our sister Johnson will be burying her grandfather this coming Saturday at the Great Father's, Father's Chapel. So we continue to please pray for her, her brother Brooks, who buried his daughter on last Saturday. If there's any other sickness that I don't know, Brother Trent is not at the hospital, but yet he's still ill. So let's continue to pray for him. Amen. Amen. All right. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer. We're going to ask that you bow your heads that we may dismiss. Turn to God, we thank you tonight for this lesson. We pray, God, that this lesson has been a blessing to those who have heard. That we may have receptive hearts, receptive ears, that your word has fallen on good ground. We pray, God, that when we depart from this place, that we can go and make disciples and teach others what we know. God, let them know that there is a God that's still in the saving business. Give us traveling grace as we travel home on tonight. Thank you for the offerings and the tithes that we have received. I pray that we will continue to go to the ongoing of your kingdom and your church. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. I bless you. You are dismissed. Bye-bye. <laughs>